Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is Bushcraft Camp. Stand by. Alright guys, welcome back. So what we're going to do today is a traditional bushcraft camp outing. Now, bushcraft is just another form of survival. You guys have seen me do a ton of videos on survival. So today we're going to switch things up and we're going to do our very first traditional bushcraft camp. Shelter, fire, water, some food, and then sit around and enjoy this beautiful mountainous landscape. So why don't we get started with shelter craft and then we'll continue down the line until our camp's set up, our food's ready to go, and then we can sit and relax and enjoy some time out here in the Rockies. Let's get going.
Now our tarp is very heavy. Left hand side was drooping a little bit. We used a little bit more bank line with the loop attachment on the exterior of the tarp to lift it up a little bit more, give us a little bit more room, and then make it look just a little bit more symmetrical and good to go for bushcraft. I'm kind of like Bob Ross when it comes to bushcraft. There are no mistakes, just happy accidents. All right guys, so we have our shelter up with our oil cloth tarp. The same ridge line as usual. We have our 550 cord quick deploy ridge line, our two Prusik knots on the line made out of bank line for our toggles left and right to suspend our shelter. And then earlier we harvested a sapling a little bit bigger than thumb in size and thickness for our tent stakes. And our tent stakes are down at the points of contact anchoring our tarp into the ground and creating our shelter. Now, the oil cloth tarp is great for bushcraft, water resistant, more of a traditional method of shelter. We can use it for a variety of purposes from shelters to suspended shelters to packing our gear in a Roycroft pack frame or bedroll and packing our things in and out, just like we saw this morning when we walked in. One of the disadvantages is that it is very heavy. Now, because it's so heavy, when we set up our shelter, it was drooping in the middle, but luckily, with this model of oilcloth tarp, along the, the exterior of the seam, we have attachment loops. And so using a little bit of bank line and then that attachment loop along with the branch above us, we we're able to attach it to one of the center loops on the exterior of the tarp, tighten it up, and then raise our shelter a little bit, giving us this tent right here with plenty of room to work with. Now all we need to do is find some more debris for our debris bed, and then we can start focusing on fire. Fire's next after that, and then we'll be able to boil our water for coffee, and then make our stowaway pot bread for a little bit of a treat. So, let's get back to work. Now, a great place to find dead dry grass is on the downslope of hills, exposed to the sun, typically to the south if you're in mountainous terrain. The snow, you can see little pockets of it out here, gonna dry very fast when exposed to sunlight, obviously, but then the dead dry grass underneath will dry out really fast. Easy to collect, easy to find if you know where you're looking, but it makes a great bird's nest or tinder bundle. So, south facing slopes, little to no snow, dry grass, excellent bird nest or tinder bundle material. All right guys, so we've got our shelter up, a little bit of a debris bed, we've got our blanket to stay warm, water and food is off to the side. We've got my haversack kit down with my primitive fire kit on top and my tinder bundle.
I'm actually gonna grab a stick here and put it right on top of my tinder bundle so it doesn't blow away. But you'll remember in one of my other videos, we had a video on primitive fire kits and how to use a primitive fire kit and the methodology behind a primitive fire kit. Now in that video, you saw me use this bow drill set. It's just a single set piece of Aspen we used for our one piece of wood bow drill set and then we used it for our primitive fire kit the other day. Now I've got my primitive fire kit from that ember with the bow drill, blew it into flame with a different tinder muddle made of cottonwood, bark, and then cattail. And now we have our primitive fire kit here. And inside that kit, we had the tin. Now in that tin, we placed cotton material, put that in our last fire to create char cloth. And that is the methodology behind a primitive fire kit. We used primitive methods to start our first fire. And then we used materials and technology available to us like this small tin and then cut material inside, put it in the fire, superheat it to get that char cloth. And this is what we're gonna use today to start our next fire. So take my flint and steel out. And then we're just gonna grab some of this char and place it into our tinder bundle, ready to go. Using another piece of char, we'll use that with our flint and steel to ignite that, place it in our tinder bundle, and blow it into flame. Now one of our methods for using flint and steel is to hold the flint or shirt, this is a piece of shirt, with the cotton material on top, our char cloth, and then using the actual striker of steel, we strike down the rock and it'll throw sparks on top of our char cloth, igniting it. Like so. And then we just take this and we put it inside of our tinder bundle and blow it into flame. All right guys, while we're waiting for our fire to create that good bed of embers and our coffee to heat up, we'll go ahead and work on our bread. We've got our 475 milliliter or half liter MSR stowaway pot. This is just a nice little pot. This is the same one that I use for a lot of my hunting kits. Got a bread mix, pre-mixed, ready to go in this bag when we walked out here. And then just a small little container of oil. So all we're gonna do is take our oil, put it in our pot, just a little bit, we don't need too much. Set that off to the side, and I'm just going to work it around to lubricate at least the bottom of the pot. Okay, good to go. And then for our bread mix here, we'll knead up the bread mix a little bit, make sure it's still good to go. And then the best way we can do this for ourselves to avoid too much headache is the old squeeze method. Cut off the corner of our bag here and then squeeze our bread mix into our pot.
squeeze as much out as we can. This is gonna be good. All right, there's our bread mix. Doesn't matter exactly how it's gonna lay. This should be good enough for our purposes. And now we just have to wait for a good bed of embers. We'll put our pot on those embers, cover them up with a little bit more embers, and let it cook for approximately 20 minutes, continuously checking it to make sure it doesn't get burned, and then we'll pull it out, and we'll have delicious bread ready to go. All right, we got a good bed of embers going. It looks like we're ready to bake. All we have to do is sweep these rocks away just a little bit to create an opening for our pot. Okay. Make sure we have a bed of embers. Then we can take our Stellway pot, place it right on top and it'll start to bake. So a method for cooking, taking this off the heat, put a few coals on top, let it cook from the top down a little bit. Our bread is nearly done and the coals are dying down a little bit. Still good enough to cook with and keep our coffee warm. But all we're waiting on now is just that bread to be nice and done. All right guys, let's see how we're looking with our bread. The lid off. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Just got my little poker stick here. Just gonna continue to poke it. Not quite done on this side, but it's good enough for government work anyway. But it's looking good. It's gonna turn into more of a fry bread, an like actual bread, doing this method, at least with the recipe that I have. But that bread's looking good enough. Let's pull it out, cut it open, see how it looks. Now we got our bread out of the fire, letting it cool. Take our lid off. Poker stick, just go around the sides here. Here's our bread. You can see it got a little burnt on the bottom. That's all right. Not too worried about it. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Still good, still good. Now it's time to enjoy our bread and our coffee. Got to bring a beer. All right, guys. So, as one of my favorite YouTubers always says, outstanding. So, we got a lot accomplished in this video for our first ever official bushcraft camp video. We got our shelter put up with our oil cloth tarp. We got some tools made. Collected a bunch of firewood. Collected debris for our debris bed. Made a fire using our primitive fire kit and materials we created from our last video. And then we were able to make our bread and our MSR stowaway pot, some coffee, and now we get to sit and enjoy the beautiful scenery that is the Rocky Mountains. I hope you guys like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me and for the channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Outstanding. 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 I gotta say it just like he does. Outstanding.